Hello everyone and welcome to Jackal Educational Channel. So this is the continuation of the crash course series and this is the part 35 in which we are discussing unit 7 of net environmental science that is solid and hazardous waste management. So those who are new and haven't checked the previous units, you can check the link given in the description below. So let's start today's video. The first question for today's video is earthworms which are inhabitants of the organic layer of the soil and which are not common in most agricultural soils are what kind of species? So here the correct option will be option number C epigeic species of earthworms are the inhabitants of the organic layer of the soil. So why we are discussing about earthworms in this solid and hazardous waste management? Yes because the solid waste which is generated from the municipality that is household which is vegetables and fruits extracts they are used to prepare vermicompost with the help of these earthworms. So we will see what are the different kinds of earthworm because this is a very important topic which usually comes in the environmental science examination. So there are mostly three important categories of earthworm that are endogeic kind of earthworm, epigeic and anechoic type of earthworms. So aye jante hai ek ek karke har ek earthworm ke bare mein. So first earthworm we will be discussing is endogeic kind of earthworm. So here you can see that endogenic earthworms are very small in size. They perform the horizontal burrows. So that is the horizontal burrow. They dig and that is their characteristic feature. Hai. And next is no pigmentation. That means there is no pigment found on their body of the endogenic kind of earthworms and there is no coloration. And they are the top soil dweller they are known as and they are rich soil feeder. Coming to the second topic that is the second kind of earthworm they are epigenic. So we know epidermis that is the upper layer. So epigeic are also the litter feeder. That's why they are also called as litter dweller because they feed on the litter which is falling from the plants and trees. So they have the pigment not like the endogeic that is not having pigment and they don't dig any burrows. So burrows wo log dig nahi karte. To isiliye unka characteristic feature hai and they are also small size. And overall they are called as surface dweller. So you have to remember this term. Finally, we will discuss about anechoic kind of earthworm. Anechoic earthworms are litter as well as soil feeder. So here, endogenic were only soil feeder and epigenic were only litter feeder. But anechoic are litter as well as soil feeder. So they are mostly known as soil dweller and they are dorsally pigmented. As you can see in this picture, the dorsal side of the earthworm is colored that is pigmented and they are extensive vertical burrower. So vertical burrows they used to dig and they are permanent in size and they are the largest in size among all the three earthworms. So they are known as deep burrowing earthworms. So remember them that they are dorsal pigmented, large size and both litter and soil feeder. So I hope you are able to understand these three important earthworms. Let's move to the next question. So now we will know about some of the important terminology associated with the solid and hazardous waste management. So the first terminology is specific weight. Yes, in solid waste management, the specific weight is defined as what? And the correct option will be option number C. Yes, specific weight of the waste means weight of the waste per unit volume. So that can be said as W by V of the waste that is weight per unit volume. So remember this one it is very important. Let's move to the next terminology question. This question is asking heat produced by a unit quantity that means one any quantity which is taken as one it is known as unit quantity of waste at constant volume and pressure is known as what. So this is also very important and here the correct option is option number B. Yes, net calorific value of waste is known as the heat produced by unit quantity of waste at a constant volume and pressure. So note down all this terminology in your notes because it is going to be very helpful in your examination. Aye chalte hamare agle question ki taraf. The next question is the total amount of water or moisture that can be held in a waste sample under the action of gravitational force is known as what? 
so this terminology also associated with the water reservoir and water table so here as i've given the hint the correct answer is option number b field capacity yes the total amount of water or moisture that can be held in a waste sample under the action of gravity is called as field capacity so the next question is the temperature at which ash forms a solid form or clinker is what so here the correct option will be option number c both a and b yes because the temperature at which ash that is burnt form of any fuel is formed from a solid form or clinker that is forming a solid form or clinker is known as the fusing point of ash that temperature is known as fusing point of that ash when it produces any solid form or clinker and this temperature usually ranges from 1100 to 1200 degree celsius so you have to remember this this is used when during incineration of the waste so let's move to our next question the next question is from the biomedical waste so the question is human tissues organs and placenta are disposed in which colored bag according to the biomedical waste rule so i hope most of the students will be able to answer this and here the correct option will be option number d yellow color bag so yellow color container is used for human tissues organs and placenta so don't worry guys we will discuss about all the colors and segregation of the biomedical waste because it's a very important question and it is very very frequently asked so mostly there are four kinds of infected waste categories which are segregated according to the color so these are red yellow blue and white and one other color is that is black which is used for non-infected waste so we'll start with the black one so non-infected waste that is cytotoxic drugs and chemical waste are disposed of in the black container and how they are treated so their treatment is chemical treatment using chemicals they are treated and then finally disposed of in the landfills let's start with the red color so in red color solid waste are disposed of so they can be infected dressing pop cast so these are put in the red container and what they are doing so after they are put in the red container they are mostly using autoclave method as the final process and they are put inside the deep burial so next comes the yellow color plastic which was given in the question so this is used to store anatomical waste mostly placenta pathological waste and body parts next comes how they are treated so these waste that is anatomical waste mostly are again treated after putting it inside the deep burial next comes the infected plastics that can be syringes gloves and plastic waste and then the syringes means without that needle okay so next they are put in the blue color plastic container and they are disinfected with 1% chlorine solution and after mutilation they are recycled so mostly recyclable things are put in the blue color container next we are going to see about the white color plastic container so white color containers are used to store and segregate the biomedical waste which are mostly sharp objects that can be needle that can be scissor so and cut glasses also so they are kept in the white plastic container how they are treated they are stored in the sharp pit so one more thing you have to remember these containers can be made up of plastic bags or plastic bins but one thing you have to remember that in white color plastic it should be punctured proof container why because it is simple as they are having sharps sharp items so it should be puncture proof container so that's the important thing about the white color container one more important thing i want to tell you that this biomedical waste management rule came initially in the year 1998 in india and it was modified in the year 2016 an important thing about yellow container i missed here is that yellow container the contents that are anatomical waste before putting into the deep burial they are incinerated or plasma pyrolysis has been carried out so these two things are done they are incineration or plasma pyrolysis after that they are given inside the deep burial let's move to the next question the next question is thermochemical treatment applied to any organic compound of waste 
in the absence of oxygen is called as what? So here in this question most often students are confused between incineration and pyrolysis but I would like to say that pyrolysis is the correct option. Yes, pyrolysis is the condition in which the treatment is done absence of oxygen that is anaerobic condition we can say but in case of incineration there is requirement of oxygen. So I hope in this lesson you have learned something so stay tuned for further updates and don't forget to subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed till now.